We all know what it feels like for something to come along and knock us off our feet, but want to know the best way to be prepared for life's next curveball? That's what we're going to get into in just a moment. Welcome to Journey Home. My name is Jared, and if you're looking for simple ideas and actions that will make your life more meaningful, and you're curious about how following Jesus can make a difference in practical ways, hey, then you're in the right place. We're all trying to live a better life and better begins right here. So, hey, thanks for joining us. We'd love for you to subscribe and just keep on coming back. You're always welcome here. The best way to keep up is to tap that bell for notifications, so make sure you do that too. Now, let's talk about what's gonna make us stronger for the next life challenge we'll face. When life gets really tough, when our emotions are running things, or when the un unexpected leaves us uncertain, like when a doctor drops a diagnosis, or when we get called into the manager's office to discuss where we fit in the organization, we all pretty much respond the same way. I mean, we sit in our bedroom or in the car or at work with our earbuds in and we think, who can I call? Uh, who am I supposed to talk to about this? <laughs> because we intuitively know that we shouldn't be facing this thing alone, that we need somebody to help us get through this, that being strong right now requires help from someone. And I hope you've never experienced this, but when you can't think of anyone or when you call and nobody shows up, it, it just plain hurts. Like it's pain on top of pain. It's devastating. You feel let down, left alone, abandoned, and invisible. So let's look at the good news. If that's been part of your journey, then you and Jesus have something in common. Like Jesus has gone through that very same thing. In his moment of greatest need, all those he had been around for the last few years, they, they just abandoned him. His closest friends deserted him, and he was alone. The night Jesus was arrested, he was actually with some friends praying, and his prayer group scattered and hid. They didn't come to speak on his behalf when he was taken into a Roman court and beaten. They hid in the shadows outside the court where Jewish religious leaders sentenced Jesus to death. And then Jesus was crucified publicly. His friends hid themselves away. Talk about feeling isolated and invisible. Jesus gets it. He knows what it's like to have no one come along to help you be strong in life's toughest moments. However, that doesn't mean there aren't some things we can do to make sure that the next time is better than that last time. So we've been in this series called Losing Connection, and the big idea we're exploring is highlighted by recent research that shows that Americans are experiencing historically high levels of feeling isolated, invisible, and insignificant. I mean, compared to 50 years ago, adults spend 20% more time by themselves. And among millennials and Gen Z, time spent with friends has gone down by 70% in the last 20 years. I mean, coincidentally, that's the same time that social media emerged, but maybe they're not the enemy. It, it just makes sense though, doesn't it? Less time with friends means less friends who show up when life gets tough. And when we don't have meaningful connection, life just ends up in chaos. When we don't have the community support to help us be strong, life can break us. Maybe tough describes what you're going through right now or what you've been through recently. Think about it. Maybe you've had a health challenge that knocked you down or you had a financial setback that caught you off guard or your kids are really struggling in school. Work has put a lot of pressure on you and you gotta put in extra time but you already feel stretched too thin and maybe your marriage just, it just doesn't feel right and anger and resentment are building up and you've been trying to carry all of that on your own Maybe you reached out to some friends and they just didn't show up and maybe they didn't want to wade into the mess with you or they felt uncomfortable with all the pain or maybe they just preferred to, preferred to avoid all that emotion. And, and so you were left alone trying your best to carry this bucket and it broke you. Well, God created you for community. You weren't designed to do life alone. You were designed to carry this weight within a community. The writer of Ecclesiastes described how God wired us this way. He says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Think about that. God designed us to accomplish more together. You want more meaning, more significance in life? You'll only achieve that within community because it takes a team. There's no such thing as a self-made man or woman. Yes, God designed you on purpose for a purpose. You have significance and meaning as an individual, but God also designed you to fulfill that purpose in community not in isolation. So each of us is better and makes a bigger impact with our lives when we work together. The writer of Ecclesiastes also knew that life was going to throw us some punches, so he wrote this as well. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. We all fall down at some point, don't we? 
Nobody is strong enough to never get knocked down by something in life. So some of you are in the middle of it right now. You're, you're like feeling you're just getting beat up, taking punch after ch punch. And it's exactly now when it's crucial to know there are people who will show up for you. And that's when you need some friends who help you feel seen, needed, and known. It's not that you can't get through whatever it is that's crushing you. It's that you really can't do it alone. When we're isolated, we lose some of our strength. When we aren't as resilient. Isolation robs us of our perseverance. That's why this last quote from Ecclesiastes says to pity the person who has no one to help them up because that person will be overwhelmed by feeling isolated, invisible, and insignificant. And the next part continues in Ecclesiastes and it looks like this. It says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Sometimes you just need someone to come along and defend you. You need somebody to fight beside you to have your back and to be your safety net because you weren't designed to carry the weight of life all on your own. But when you have a couple of friends alongside you carrying that load with you, when you have a community that cares, you can carry the weight. Last week, I told you that when Jesus came along, he used language that was family oriented. He invited us to call God our Heavenly Father. He called us sons and daughters of God. And He referred to us as brothers and sisters. He raised the bar for how we were to relate to one another. He said to love one another like He loved us. And this is the part of what loving looks like. Love shows up for one another. Love sees one another. Love needs one another. Love takes the time to know the other person. When, love gets, when life gets tough, love doesn't walk away. Love walks into the mess and the pain. And that's why Apostle Paul wrote this. And he said, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ is the law of love. It's loving one another like Jesus loves us. And you live that out every time you come along someone to help them carry their load. So let me ask you a couple questions. Do you have friends who show up when life gets messed up? If life hits you hard at 2 a.m., who are you confident will show up? And this is important, they'll help you carry the load for the long haul. I mean, some people will show up in the moment, but it's a different kind of friend who doesn't put that bucket down until it's empty. <laughs> who will show up for you and keep showing up for you because they love you like Jesus loves you? Now, here's the second question, a little bit harder. Are you this kind of friend to a few people? I mean, you can't do it for everyone, but do you do this for a few people? Are you there for people who have no doubt you'll show up and not ghost them over time. That you'll carry the bucket with them as long as it needs to be carried. I mean, this is what it looks like to love. If you're a Jesus follower, this is what you've been called to do. Will you move towards being that kind of friend this week? Maybe you need to have a conversation and let somebody know that they can count on you. And maybe you need to apologize for not carrying the load with someone in the past, but you're gonna commit to do it better next time. Maybe you need to send a thank you note to someone who has selfly been beside you and you've been strengthened by their friendship. And maybe you need to send a text asking for help to carry the weight you're carrying right now. You can't do life well without those kinds of friendships. You need friends who are helping you belong and be strong. And here's what I know. There's going to be a moment in the future when something happens and you'll wanna give up. There's gonna be a moment when you wanna walk away. You'll face a crisis or a challenge along the way that causes you to doubt whether you have what it takes to overcome it. And you're going to need some friends to come along and support you in that moment and protect you from making a decision that you'll later regret. You'll need them to keep doubt and discouragement and danger from overpowering you. As a pastor, listen, I get to see people at low points in their lives all the time, and I get to see how practical and real this is. I watch some people have the right circle around them and see how much different it makes in their life. And I watch people who don't have community and they struggle much more than they would have to if they simply had invested in the best kinds of friendships. I know, I, I, I get it. We're all busy people. The temptation to settle for efficient relationships, for convenient, for practical, functional, and transactional, that's all easier to do and they meet some of our needs, but they're not transformational relationships. They're not the kind of friendships that help you belong and be strong. They don't help you become all God created you to be. They don't carry you through a crisis. They're just convenient. And convenient relationships eventually create chaos. If you want to belong and be strong, be intentional about finding and being the kind of friend who carries one another's burdens. And one day, 
you'll be glad you did.